Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. I hope that you are ready for a really awesome video tonight because starting All right, a quick glance around at all of this wonderful, fun, exciting, and confusing, and ridiculous, and tedious, and not really extremely clear stuff should be a pretty clear indication to you guys that of the scope and scale of this project. This is not something that should be taken lightly, and hopefully this video, by the time it's all finished, is going to help you guys if you ever decide to undertake a project like this on your own. Because there's quite a few things going on here I'm going to try and explain. This is our new head unit right here. With that new head unit came several things. We had a microphone, a, a generic wiring harness, two USB cables. I don't exactly know what those are going to be used for yet. Probably some connection to the system USB drive. Installation screws, installation and removal keys, and this trim plate. That was everything that came with this head unit. What came with my kit from Crutchfield, we have this Metra installation kit, this trim plate and an installation bracket. This came by itself, it's an antenna adapter cable, heat shrink. This is another USB to USB mini B cable. This is another thing that my dad wanted to get. It is basically a converter for one of the little 12 volt. This Kenwood head unit doesn't have a front aux like our current stereo head unit does. My dad wanted to preserve that, so he bought this kit from Amazon, which has a new replacement essentially for one of the 12 volt power ports in the front of the stereo. You replace that with a USB and an aux. Um, so that's a pretty nifty little thing. We'll see how that ends up working with everything else. And then this is the little control module that lets you keep all of your stock functions. Um, it's an I data link maestro RR, or maybe that's an AR, I don't really know. And it comes with this wiring to start with, all this wonderful junk. But then on top of that, Crutchfield had us include with that all this. And there's a speaker and some more cables and I'm frankly not entirely sure what they're all supposed to go to. Hopefully by the end of all this, I'll know exactly how everything is supposed to be set up and I'll be able to help you guys out. However, to let my brain kind of uh, take a break from staring at all these colors and frenzy of information, let's go rip out the stock unit. There's something I can do. Just kidding guys, I lied. The Suburban is actually out in use right now, so I'm going to go ahead and start configuring that little master control unit switch thing that came with all the other wiring. Basically, you have to connect it to your computer and flash it with some um, pre-set up stuff beforehand. Hopefully that'll make it so that we don't have to do as much of the actual programming ourselves. I don't know. Um, but it says that it also comes with a, a splicing guide for uh, what wires I need to solder and stuff. So uh, I figured it doesn't hurt to do that. Okay, that little module is all flashed up and ready to go. And fortunately with the flashing of that, I was able to get a big sheet that shows me supposedly how I need to wire up everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay that all out for you guys. You guys can see what exactly is going on and then we'll get into the actual soldering of the wires. So this incredibly complex looking mess of wires isn't as bad as it might seem. These two pieces that I have clipped in here and here now came with the uh, GM5 wiring harness set and they clip in to their own harness right here. These wires for this radio installation are not going to be used. These are for low level output speakers. Um, this Kenwood radio doesn't have those. It has, if you look here, these are direct wire in um, wires for the blue, the green, the white, and the gray. And there are no ports on the back of the head unit to basically allow for a plug like this. So I'm gonna have to obviously splice those wires together. Lucky me, 
I think what I'm gonna go do is figure out how the heck you solder, then I think we're gonna go for it. I probably will get something else to solder on, because obviously carpet is not really ideal for that. I'm excited to finally have a direction here, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, here is my uh, budget DIY soldering setup that I just put in my garage. Um, relatively large area, so hopefully I won't fume myself out. Then we've got um, the new harness that we're gonna be wiring everything into and the Kenwood harness. Basically what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna get the soldering gun, turn it on, heat up a wire, feed some solder onto it. We gotta prep the wires as well. Let's do the ground, a good one to start with. This black wire is the ground wire and then so you're going to find the black wire from the factory harness as well. And then I'm going to take, so you're gonna want a tool like this as well and you're basically going to use it to strip off about a half inch of the sheath on each wire and then you're going to put the two wire tips together. You're gonna to put the soldering gun on there, pull the trigger, and then feed some solder over it. I'm excited to try this out. One thing I read said that um, solder is really easy to work with if you curl it into a coil so you have something to hold on to as you feed the solder into it. So this is kind of like a very rudimentary TIG welding that uses heat rather than um, an arc. Basically the premise is that you heat the two the, tip, the touching tips of the wires. I'm actually gonna twist them together. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to make sure they stay together. Heat them up, and then I'm going to solder them to make a connection. Should be pretty cool. Let's go ahead, get our huge harness. Go ahead, clamp your tool onto the wire, and pull. And just like that, we've got some exposed copper right there. I'm gonna leave that exposed for the time being. Get my other wire from the Kenwood harness, follow the same procedure, removing the sheath, ba-boom, put that right there. And then I'm gonna take these, I'm going to kind of make like a two separate, kind of like you're gonna braid them together, for lack of a better way to describe it. And once they are woven, oh, oh I hate you wiring, I really do. Note here, I'm gonna twist them into individual, twisting each wire together into itself. As you can see, I'm trying to figure this out as I go. Definitely not a wiring expert, as I've said many times, I hate wiring. Not my favorite thing to do, but I'm doing it because projects gotta get done, can't be stingy. And also, this is just a pretty cool opportunity to do something that a lot of people don't know how to do, don't get to do, and here I am, learning how to do it. Failing along the way, Having a fun time nonetheless. You're gonna melt the solder, the filler, with the wire heat, not the gun itself. We put the gun on there, pull the trigger, it should heat the wire. I don't know how quickly this gun works. Once it's hot enough, if I touch the solder to it, it'll melt. It's obviously not hot enough yet. Hey guys, quick little update the next day. Last night I was being a uh, smarty and um, well, smarty me forgot that I had a whole bunch of heat shrink tubing that I was going to put over the wires before I soldered them. That's a pretty important thing to do to cut out a piece of your heat shrink, slide it back down the wire away so then you can slide it over the solder and then heat shrink it with the heat gun. So I'm gonna redo all the soldering. Yeah, but I think you guys get a pretty good idea of what the soldering is like, so I don't. I think I'm gonna time lapse the whole thing. Maybe I'll do a little, I don't know, we'll see. Alrighty, another quick status update with you guys. We got our first ground wire soldered and there's some heat shrink right here. It's struggling a bit to fit over it, but because the ground wire is the biggest, I'm not tremendously worried about it. If need be, we can try and uh, shrink down this big clump of solder and maybe get that over or electrical tape wrap it if uh, we have to. So I'm just gonna set up a time lapse of myself re-soldering all these wires together. Hopefully we don't end up shortening them too much because I'm going to have to kind of fan the ends out so they can really get twined together a little better so that I can do the heat shrink because what I was doing before with 
hooking them around each other obviously made a huge solder bead and that doesn't really work super well when you're trying to fit a little heat shrink over it. But I don't know, we're doing what we can, doing the best we can. I'm sacrificing going to watch an autocross for this, so. After several hours of working on this, wiring is never easy or fun in my experience. Everything is finally connected. Some of them we forgot to put heat shrink on. We'll just wrap those in electrical tape. Um, red for the power, black for everything else. And hopefully um, we'll be able to get everything wired up. I think I may start on the teardown now since this is all pretty much finished. I'm excited to go. And of course, once I heat shrink these, um, I will show you guys what it looks like when the heat shrink shrinks. sure all the other ones are already on just in case you accidentally put it on one that's these ones need to be all slid over yeah let's make sure they're all slid over alrighty looking at our 5.3 vortec engine bay I need to find the battery right over here and then I'm gonna disconnect the negative battery cable just in there. There it is, you guys can see it now. It's pretty simple and easy, of course, just a 10 mil, as most batteries are. Having this uh, ratcheting wrench is really nice here. And just loosen it enough so I can pull the cable out. So try that. Bingo. No, I don't want that to touch anything metal. And the time has finally come to start doing teardown on the vehicle itself. This is the old faulty head unit. It takes up this entire area that I'm outlining here with my fingers. And in order to get to it, we need to take off this trim plate that goes around the entire uh, console area here. So to do that, I'm going to use these plastic pry bars so we don't scratch anything or break anything. I have read that the clips are very, very tight down here. Um, so I am going to be very gradual my application of force. Hopefully nothing will break and we'll be able to get this out without any incident. quick bit of explanation for some of you guys. So this big bundle of wires comes with the Maestro iDatalink thing. You don't need it because of the other, the harness that we got. The harness takes care of all the wires that are here with for us, so I don't have to worry about doing any more soldering with all of these. Huzzah, hooray, I'm happy. Um, but right now, we are actually working on getting everything plugged into this master control unit, whatever it's supposed to be. Um, so this green connector is supposed to go there for sure. This uh, other black connector with three pins goes right next to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in right now actually as well. Okay, plugging something in and holding a camera doesn't really work. Slide that connector in as well. Those both clip in. They have a little pull tab for you to release them. Looking at our big master diagram here, there's an audio cable. This came with the unit. We take the twisty tie off. And this audio cable plugs in down here. Here, that's clipped in now. 
and that'll all run into the Kenwood unit. There's a data cable, which I believe is in this bag, and that will plug in at the top. You're not gonna use this cable either, that's also included in the big GM harness. So this is the data cable. So I'll clip that in as well. That takes care of that side. Got a couple more clips on this side. Here are some of them. This is that replacement of that, this, bu this bundle of wires gets replaced by these right here. So do the big one first. Clip that in, looks good. Okay, so this chime speaker, are we using a chime speaker? Do you want it? Do you know what it's for? Plug it in. Guess we'll find out what it chimes for. And then yeah. we'll unhook it if we don't yes. like it. Another cable that I don't know what it's for yet. Another twisty tie. Oh my goodness, twisty ties. So we might want to wait and plug that in after we decide where the speaker's gonna go. Might be easier to run That's a good idea, actually. the wire from where the speaker. We'll, we'll leave that go. undone for now. C, I think. This is C. So it'll go right in there. Currently figure out how exactly we're supposed to connect everything. I'm working on getting new mounting bracket all set up. You got the Kenwood right there. I think I'm gonna have to take off this sleeve. Not for sure, but pretty sure that this sleeve is gonna have to come off right here. So I'll get the keys and do something for that. Not a lot left to do, guys. This uh, bracket seems pretty straightforward to use. Um, you just slide these two brackets that came with this mounting plate in the front in there. Let me actually show you guys where that's supposed to be inside the vehicle. So as you guys can see these ridges here, those are going to be mirrored by the new mounting bracket so it can bolt right in to the stock mounting points. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. The Kenwood came with these screws right here and those are the screws that I'm going to be using to set everything up with this frame. Basically the principle is I slide the radio in and then I will then screw the hole, the radio in with the holes as well. Then I need to do all the connection and fun stuff like that. Test the radio out, but we'll get there when we get there. Right now, I just wanna get the radio into this bracket mount and stuff. All right, the Kenwood is all mounted up to the new mounting bracket. It looks pretty awesome, I gotta say. I hope I did this in the right orientation, because if not, that's gonna stink. I decided to use the round-headed Kenwood screws mainly because the flat ones wouldn't go into the bracket. It's pretty stably held in. So with that being done, I'm gonna show you guys my dad's progress. He's working on something pretty cool right now. Putting a new replacement for one of our uh, 12 volt ports. Instead of having a standard 12 volt, his cap is sticking on pretty good. We've got, so we still have a front aux and a USB. He's working on wiring that up right now. So that's pretty cool. I think next thing for me is probably gonna be to pull the stock unit all the way out and get to work putting everything else in. Look at that guys, factory head units out. We just had to do some more pulling on cables back in there. Um, just a word to the wise, let me give you some advice. So these four connections right around my fingers here are what was connected to the stock radio. This one, and this one, and this one, which is, this last one's the antenna. They all came out without any problem, but this little mini USB was a bit more of a pain. We actually had to get a flathead screwdriver and pry it under the metal clip to get it off. It would not come off just as pressing on the tab with our fingers, just so y'all are aware of that. We also got a little adapter for that little mini USB so that we can plug it into the back of our new Kenwood unit because with the standard design that it, this has, it doesn't work. This is the USB for the center console. This thing right here, if you wanna use and keep that USB port, you need to get an adapter for this and you need to connect that adapter into the back of your Kenwood stereo. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the Kenwood had, has these two connections. There is a gray one and a black one. The black one is compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The gray one is not. So we're gonna be connecting this black one to that new replacement for the 12 volt. This gray one is gonna be connected to the old one in the center console because we don't use that one to connect our phones to. We're gonna use that one for USB music. So that being said, we're gonna take this USB adapter that's going to plug in to the um, factory harness. And then that end is gonna plug, plug right here into this gray one. 
and that's going to help us keep our factory USB music from the center console USB port. That goes right into there, and this will go right into the factory little USB port. So, well, pretty uh, important that you have this adapter, otherwise you'll lose that center console USB port, and you'll just have a little flash drive thing. I don't know, maybe it's, people nowadays will stick their jewels in there. If you look in here, this is the factory antenna connection. And this cable is going to make it so that we can use that factory antenna connection with our new stereo. The Kenwood has an antenna connection that connects to a connector like this, rather than one that is like this. So we're gonna need to plug this end into that factory antenna so we can use the antenna port on the Kenwood, which will connect to this end of the connector. I'm gonna connect it to the stereo. That way we can just carry the stereo and everything else over here and then just put it into the factory ports with the stereo on the dashboard or in the passenger seats or something. Reconnect the battery cable, start everything up, check how it's going. Of course, that's later down the line once we get everything set up and figured out. But right now, it's looking like we'll be done in a couple hours. This is so exciting. Everything is coming together. It's all working out. When I first started this project, I was like, oh, there's no way this is gonna happen, but it's happening. So we've got the little chime speaker that came with the harness down here. This is just a temporary spot for it. There might be somewhere that we end up putting it down here, but we wanna see what exactly it's for first. We don't know for now. So we've just got it right where we can easily get to it. It runs just back up into this corner and then it runs right up here to the dashboard with this connector. We've got the other thought connectors. We don't have a center speaker. We don't have a backup camera and I don't think we have a subwoofer. We might, but um, because of that, we don't have to use any of the RCA cables. We just have these two connectors, that USB and the antenna. So there's not a whole lot of extra crazy cabling we ought to do. We're gonna tuck the um, iDataLink Maestro unit up in the back of the dashboard around here somewhere. My dad set up a really cool thing with the new aux and USB combination cable. He just ran them through the back so that they come around. And then we've got a USB. Um, we'll plug that into the black cable um, of the Kenwood. This jack will go into the aux um, input in the back of the Kenwood. It's come together beautifully right now. I'm not really sure what this shiny hose back here is with a, what looks like um, heat plating. I suspect that may be one of the hoses for the heater core. Kind of wondering why Chevy decided to route that right behind the radio. Everything's working out great. I'm super stoked. It's gonna be sick. Here's our completed spliced and bundled up wiring harness. This is the connector that goes into the Kenwood stereo. There's a couple of unused wires that came off of that. Those are either taped up or they had sheath on them that we have left on. They're just gonna be free floating. And then we have that runs down through and connects um, into this box in a variety of different ways. These cables are going to connect directly into the back of the Kenwood. And then we're going to also connect that speaker that's already running back up in there though. So we're not tremendously worried about that right now to this very moment. We have these two connectors. Those are going to connect to former ports that went directly into the back of the factory stereo. The ones I was talking about when I said that we didn't have a sub or center speaker. This connects to the OBD2 wire so we can get some vehicle data through the head unit. We're gonna find a place to put this little puppy and if you look inside the dashboard here, we have all our, all the factory connectors hooked up to the new harness, fun mess. We have our new head unit right here and we're just gonna wire everything up and basically test it to see if it works. I'm gonna start with, so this USB cable is gonna connect to your new one, right? Yep, on the top there. So connect that. Our new USB connection, this. There's the metal clip of death. Antenna adapter. In there. That's the data link. Into there. I data link communication connector. Plug that in until it clicks. This aux in actually goes right there. All right, so that'll be the final big, big one, I guess. Okay, in theory, once we uh, reconnect the negative battery cable, we should be able to test our head unit. We are ready to go. This is the first time that we're gonna try and we've got everything wired up. I'm not gonna start the vehicle fully. One, the garage is closed. Two, just trying to see if this gets power and such. I reconnected the negative battery cable, put the fuse that we had to take out with the old head unit back in. Let's see what happens. Okay, power.
power's up, that's good. No, I don't know. This is copyrighted. So with that confirmation that it does indeed work, turn on, play sound through the speakers and everything, I think we're ready to put it back into the dash. Even if something ends up not working exactly how we think down the line, it isn't going to be that terrible to take back out. And with all that mess of wiring, we really want to make some time to go ahead and make sure that that's all good. Hopefully the lights behind me aren't blinding you guys right now. I just realized that. So we're going to just try and shoehorn everything back in there, make sure it all fits, get everything back in there, and then we will pull the car all the way out, start it up for real, and I'll play some music for you guys so you can see just how great this thing is. All right, everything is put back together and it is in looking pretty sick. Unfortunately, with this new um, replacement for the 12 volt port, we were not able to get the connector for the back of this new aux right here to fit essentially in the back of the dashboard with all the new wiring and everything. However, the biggest issue about that was that the kit that we got for this, which was not from Crutchfield, this was the only thing that we ordered separately, it came with a straight connector in the back, and that straight connector made it so that the back of the connector was contacting the um, sub dash, and so it would not fit. However, that was the only thing that didn't work. Everything else seems good, so we're going to go through a de more detailed exploration of it. I'll play some music for you guys, and uh, hopefully this was a great help for you all learning how to install an aftermarket stereo of any sort, but more especially some of these more complex ones that let you retain all the factory fancy features in a 2010 Chevrolet Suburban or similar model, Suburban, Silverado, anything with a dashboard like this. Alrighty, everybody, the audio does work, so we did have a successful mission there. However, none of the steering control buttons work to my knowledge so far. None of the ones here. Cruise control we shouldn't have messed with, so I don't know if that'll still work. So, we still have some things to work on there, um, but as far as the vital functions of a radio, it does perform those. We do need to set up all this other fun stuff and everything. Actually, it's in demo mode. We didn't actually set it up, so that might be our problem. So I will update you guys. However, as you guys can hear right now, from the uh, Electronomia. I'm gonna have to blur my name out now. Sound works, so huzzah. Success in that respect. Let me go see if I can get it out of demo mode and then I'll tell you if the steering wheel controls work then. So guys, unfortunately, taking it out of demo mode did not solve the issue with none of the steering wheel controls working. However, we do have a bit of interesting information. When we plug um, a phone into that new USB port that we used to replace one of the 12 volt ports, it does say that the phone is charging, however, the head unit doesn't recognize the phone, even though the other USB, the other USB inside the center console reads as being connected just fine. I'm not really entirely sure what is going on with that. However, it works as a radio for the time being, that's pretty awesome. And as far as installation goes, I think that this was a pretty good guide as how to do it. Because the radio doesn't recognize a phone being plugged into it, I'm really hoping that it's just not doing anything for some reason, be it, it needs a firmware update or something like that, it's just not doing anything right now other than be a radio. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe a firmware update will fix the issue with none of the steering wheel controls working even though we put in the iData Link Maestro thing. So pull back in, shut it off. But before we do that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please go down there, hit that subscribe button so that you can find out um, what I ended up doing to fix the issue. I'm going to be trying to figure it out. Of course, sometimes things take time, but as soon as I'm able to figure it out or we're able to figure it out, I will tell you guys what happened. I will give you an update about why the steering wheel controls and everything is not working. I'll make a video about that. So if you want to see that video, please go down there and subscribe and come back for more awesome automotive how-to videos and other automotive content from me. Please leave a like on the video if you found it helpful, useful, enjoyable. I'm sorry that we weren't able to get everything working exactly. 
it does work as a radio, of course, but obviously if you're gonna get this unit, you're not just wanting a plain radio, so. Have any feedback, commentary, um, stuff you enjoyed about the video, maybe some ways that I can improve, go ahead, leave that down there in the comment section too. And make sure you share this video with all your friends so that they can see how easy um, it is to actually do this yourself, even though it can look really, really intimidating. I was super worried going into this that it wasn't gonna work out. And while it isn't perfect yet, I'm sure it will be eventually, we'll get it. I believe. So that's all I really got for you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, night, whatever time of the solar rotation it is for you. Peace out.